10,368,420 seconds. Or 120 days, if you want to be less dramatic. It's the amount of time needed for the first artificial heart to die off. The time needed for a war between Spain and America to end. The time needed for the first ever space flight. Also, the time needed to convert a shitty supermoto into a rowdy machine. So, after way too much time, I can finally say that my Kawasaki KLX 450R is finally done. This is the last part of the build series, if you could even consider this a build series. But either way, let's go through some of the points, the main points that we needed to tackle during this process. First things first, the thing hit the world. And what this means is that, oh, you need a certain part? Cool, that'll be three weeks shipping. Oh, you need something else for the supermoto? Another three weeks. Oh, maybe we discovered another issue with the bike. Another three weeks shipment time. This pandemic delayed everything from production to shipping. So ultimately they ended up delaying this project quite a lot. This waiting for parts has basically been the story of my life for the past few months. But then we went to the first chapter, cooling. These bikes are known to run hot and well, in the case of women, hot might be good. Motorcycles are different. The KLX is known to run hot in general, and in a stoplight to the equation, we needed proper cooling. The cheap hacky solution changed the radiator cap to a high pressure one which doesn't allow water to boil out. It kinda works, but just like taking cocaine while driving in order not to fall asleep, it's just a band-aid. The true solution was mounting a free fan system to the radiator. This is coupled to a thermostat which turns the fans on automatically when the coolant reaches a certain temperature. The radiator doesn't have any factory way to mount a fan, so creativity had to be used. Chapter 2 Electrics And oh boy, this was a long one. Now if you remember from the previous video, the wiring harness was a mess. It was all held together with duct tape, so we basically had to redo the entire electrical system. Like Anything that's not related to the engine running was redone. So the headlight, blinkers, stoplight, horn, and everything now is all fused up. So that means that there's no risk of me becoming ghost rider on the street. That sounds all nice and dandy. So I go to pick up the bike, I ride it for about half an hour and then it all turns off. I have no dash, no lights, no turn signals, no nothing. Obviously something is wrong, right? So we changed the entire electrical system, except for the charging, because that one appeared to work fine beforehand. Well, uh, long story short, it didn't. So a new stator and 500 euros later, and after waiting for it for about three months, everything was good to go, right? We were ready to ride into the sunset. I ride away happily, and after an hour, again, no power at all. So it had to be the relay this time then, right? Well, we ordered the new relay and about five days later it arrived. We put it on the bike, plug it in and the relay started melting its own metal housing. Obviously something was wrong and the relay was not the right model so it just melted itself to bits. So finally we tried adapting another relay from a different motorcycle and this time it worked, right? The bike was giving charge and the relay wasn't melting, so we hacked it together and we put it inside the bike and now the charging worked, right? Um, yes, as long as the headlight wasn't turned on. Yeah, useful. So I changed the battery to a lithium ion one. These should take a charge easier, right? Indeed, but not easy enough. The bike still drank more go juice than it produced. So finally I changed the original halogen headlight bulb to an LED bulb. And voila! All it took to fix it was to basically change the entire electrical system. Chapter 3. The engine. This is a short one, no rebuild was needed, just a valve adjustment and a carburetor clean. Easy enough, job done. Chapter 4. Wheels. The old set was pretty beat up, and more importantly, illegal. So I went balls to the walls on a brand new 17 inch set from Warp 9. These are fully custom wheels, with white rims and spokes being contrasted by green nipples and valve stamps. They are absolutely gorgeous, and for 2000 euro shipped, they'd better be. Chapter 5. 
chapter 5, plastics and graphics. The old plastics were pretty banged up, so I decided to order brand new UFO plastics. That's great, until I realized that half of the stuff I ordered I can't really use or I shouldn't really use. Let me explain. So let's take the front fender for example, right? It's a cut down fender, supermodel style, so basically it's not as long as a regular dirt bike one. Was there any point in chopping up a brand new plastic for the front fender? No. And then you also have the fork guards, right? Pretty cool, except these also have to be cut down from the original in order to fit the slightly wider and smaller 17 inch wheel. So was there any point in cutting up brand new fork guards? Again, no. Was it a waste of money? Moving on. Graphics. It's not easy to find a company that makes graphics for this model, but I found an Aussie website called SKDA Designs. Good design and quality, and 200 euros later I had the graphics. Could I have gotten fully custom graphics for a lot less locally? Yes. Was I an idiot for not doing that? Moving on. Chapter 6. Brakes. This is the place where I had basic things to do. Change the fluids, pads, maybe a caliper rebuild, but not much. The rear caliper ended up not needing a rebuild, but the hard part was actually sourcing the front brake pads. Step 1. Figure out what calipers do I have. Knew they were made by Behringer, but I didn't know which model they were and what year. It took me two full days to guess the exact model, and apparently I have a 4 piston endurance unit. Pretty neat. Still, I need to find the pads, and that's not easy during a pandemic and when talking about a niche, obscure brand. In the end I had a choice between some random shop in Belgium and some other random shop in the UK, so Belgium it was. All this process only took me about 3 days. The good part is that after all though, the pads did fit. And by the way, they're the most expensive brake pads that I've ever had to buy. I also replaced the tires with brand new ones front and rear with some Michelin Pilot Power RS. Really sticky and they do their job amazingly. Changed the coolant, changed the oil, basically all the fluids were given a bit of a refresh. Was this all worth it? Um, I don't know. How much did it all cost? Honestly, I don't know and I sort of don't want to know at this point. I definitely know that the total sum of the parts combined was more than what I initially paid for the motorcycle, uh, which is obviously not ideal. So was it all worth it in the end? Um, I had to ride it for a bit and you will have to tune in for the full review on this bike. This is just a reveal, so there is a review coming soon where we're gonna go into how this bike rides and was it actually... Is there any point in doing this? If I did learn something from this entire experience is that sometimes it's actually a really good idea to listen to others. The entire internet says that supermoto conversions from enduro bikes are a bad idea. Um, and I always thought to myself, I mean, these are simple bikes, how hard could it be? And I realized why they're such a bad idea. Sometimes things don't work the way you expect them to. Now, I'm not saying this bike didn't turn out right. It turned out amazing. Like, this bike makes me feel like I'm eight every time I ride it. It's a coon! So much fun to ride and rip around. In order to get to this, we had to go for quite a bit of a hassle, so... All that's left to do is for me to enjoy it properly and to come back with the full thoughts on the finished product. Yes, a proper review is coming soon. Until then, make sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok, links in the description. Also, give this video a like, leave a comment and maybe even a sub to the channel, that would be amazing. And as always, until next time, have a good one. Bye.